Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. You can find all the old shows, nominate new shows, look at a list of people we're looking at talking to. Uh, also, I have here Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and one of the authors of Open MPI. Jeff, uh, once again, you grace us with your presence. Ah, you're far too kind, Brock. This is uh, great stuff. And today we're going to be uh, looking at uh, a project, actually kind of a suite of projects. I mean, we're going to be talking about one of them in particular, but uh, there's actually a whole bunch of uh, additional tools that integrate nicely with it. And uh, it's something that most people don't think about too much and they just kind of assume. But uh, having really good tools in this area is actually really, really important. You'll find in, 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 or at least my experience has been in, in most software projects, there's only one or two people who really understand the, the tools in this particular area. Yeah. So the project we're talking about today is actually the CMake. Um, I want to call it a build system, but I think it does more than that. So we'll let our guests actually describe what that is when we get into that. Uh, our guest is another representative from Kitware who we've had on the show, uh, represented on the show before. Uh, Bill, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks for the uh, kind words about uh, CMake. I'm one of the original founders of Kitware. I've, I did my uh, master's degree at Rensselaer Polytech Institute, RPI. I spent about nine years at GE's um, research center in Niskayuna, which is shockingly enough where Kitware is located now, about 15 minutes away from there. Kitware, I started in 1999 with uh, four other folks. And the CMake project was actually came out of one of our first projects with the National Library of Medicine and the uh, Insight Toolkit creation in early 2000. We were actually tasked with creating a build system, and that's where CMake got its beginnings. So describe CMake. Uh, some people have maybe used like the regular GNU or POSIX Make before, but uh, describe CMake and what it does. Sure. Well, CMake is a meta-build system, and in fact, many people who use CMake use GNU Make all the time. So what CMake does is the user would provide a simple input of what they want built. I want a library, and here are the source files, and then CMake would generate maybe GNU Make files, maybe Visual Studio Project files, maybe Xcode Project files, and then the user would use those tools to actually do the build. So what's the difference here? Why why do we need another make like utility? I mean, make is is pretty prevalent in in POSIX like systems. Now you did mention cross system support like a Visual Project and whatnot, but does anybody use the X11 project files anymore? Or you know what what's kind of the advantage of CMake over the traditional make? Certainly, the cross platform nature of it is a huge advantage, and one of the main reasons people adopt it. However, the, the make files that it generates are also very interesting, even in a POSIX world, in that they have uh, progress reporting as they're building. They do nice colored output. They abstract away, you know, building a shared library is, you know, just create library, and you don't have to figure out what particulars are involved with doing that on different systems. So how is that different than, say, uh, you know, one of your, your the, probably the most obvious of your competition here is AutoMake, which uh, doesn't really do progress or color, but it does do things like, hey, just make me a library, you know, magic go. Sure, I think one of the, the again, the cross-platform nature of it would be one of the major advantages. Um, the AutoTools project works fine as long as you have a complete Unix system, and it uses, you know, Bash and... M4 and a whole other host of tools. CMake was designed really to only, the only thing it really depend on, depended on was a C++ compiler. So should we, for, in, so a little sidetrack here, does that mean CMake itself is written in C++? It is. It's C and C++. Okay. And uh, so what, I, there, I, I understand there's a bunch of other advantages versus the auto tools too. You want to give a little blow by blow of uh, some of your, your cool features? Sure. Um, CMake has the ability to uh, you know, build cross-platform um, with only a C++ compiler. And again, I think one of the really strong points of CMake is that it takes advantage of 
the most scarce resource on a project, and that's the people working on it. And those people, everyone, if you look across Kitware, there's people that really like Visual Studio. They like developing on Windows. There's the people that use uh, Qt Creator and they're Linux developers. There's people like me that use Emacs on the command line. And all those people can work on a project together with CMake because it's actually generating the build tool of choice for the developers instead of forcing all the developers on the team to use a particular tool set. Um, so that, that, I think, is a big advantage, that it can actually take advantage of those developer skills and allow them to use the tools they want. So, so you're actually having people developing on different platforms on a single project. Uh, does CMake do any type of verification that the code they're writing is portable between systems, or is CMake completely unaware of any of that? CMake itself is just a build system, so it really, you know, you can put any code you want in there, and it will uh, obviously not build cross-platform if it doesn't build on that platform. However, like you mentioned in the beginning, there's more to CMake than just a build tool. It's actually grown into a family of tools. Uh, there's CTest, which runs tests in a project. There's CDash, which is a web-based application. Again, these are all open source tools and fit into this family of tools. CDash is a PHP-based um, LAMP stack web application that displays test results a continuous integration system similar to uh, Hudson. And then finally, C CMake also comes with a tool called CPAC, which can create Windows installers or RPMs or Debian packages automatically using the install rules already in your CMake project. So CMake itself is written in C++ and all these other tools, they're independent, like you don't have to adopt the entire CMake environment with CTest and CPAC, or can you take pieces? You can take pieces. Um, some people use it just for the build system. Some people use the whole suite. Obviously, CDash is completely separate. That's a separate application. Um, Kitware hosted, um, cdash.org. There's also my CDash. If you want to try it out, you can create a hosted project really quick. But it's not tied with CMake. CTest and CPAC are actually C++ binaries that ship um, bundled with CMake, so they're always available. Um, one of the restrictions of CMake, I think, is that we always want whatever tools are available, if you're going to actually call them from a build file, we want to make sure that the core, um, the core testing and packaging are always available on all the platforms. And the only way to do that is to bundle them with, with CMake itself. So is CMake itself distributed in, in uh, popular Linux distros, or, or is it mainly downloaded via the Internet? CMake's actually had quite a, uh, a growth in downloads from, from our site. I think we get somewhere around 1,800 to 2,000 downloads a day of the CMake binary and sources. But CMake is also included in all the major Linux distributions, um, Siglin, um, so that um, OS exports. So CMake's readily available everywhere, and that was a one of the problems early on is sort of a chicken and the egg thing. We've got this new tool, but you have to install the binary to do your build. Um, but that's changing over time. Um, I won't belabor it much longer other than say that the KDE adoption had a lot to do with that popularity. So, yeah, this is exactly uh, uh, an important point because way back eons ago when we started the OpenMPI project, we were looking at all the various build tools that were available at the time, and uh, we did not want to introduce a dependency on a, on a build tool so that, you know, we were the, the new MPI implementation on the block, and we wouldn't want to say, oh, yes, to try out our awesome code, you got to go first get this build tool, and then you can build open MPI. And so that was why we ultimately ended up going uh, with the auto tools um, at that time, because they do a wonderful job of, of bootstrapping uh, a tarball so that when you download the OpenMPI tarball, you don't need to have the auto tools installed. All you need are compilers and, and make. Does CMake do something like that, or does it still require uh, you know, a source tarball that was created with CMake? Does that need to have CMake installed on the target machine? Okay. 